Yes, it's me, Tony the Kid, Just Us Rejects today. Totally appreciate y'all for joining us on the Reject Rundown. It is our special new segment. Uh, how do you want to explain this new segment? So, this new segment is just you guys listening to us talk, and um, pretty much you're getting the real us. And we're not over the top, over hyping anything. It's just us talking about what we want to talk about, and mm-hmm. uh, you're going to hear the real us. <laughs> pretty much all in a nutshell now on the topic today it's going to be the Snyder Cut of Justice League which is coming out I think March 18th if I'm not mistaken or March 15th March 18th March 18th yeah, okay. what is that like a Thursday I believe it is Thursday Damn. so it's not Friday it's a Thursday which is really inc- you know I'm really thinking that he's doing that on purpose so he can hear the hype on Friday and then everybody work. spoils the movie for you and on Friday and Saturday. Well, if people were trying to do that when it somehow something happened with HBO Max. They released it during the time of Jerry, and a lot of people were able to see it before we did. Really? Yes. Damn. Yeah, exactly. Damn. I don't know how. I mean, when I wa- on Friday I watched Tom and Jerry, I didn't get the Snyder cut. Otherwise, I would have stuck with that. So I don't know, but it's okay. It's all right. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, and I've been patiently waiting for the longest ever. So. Now, going on to the next show, uh, this this epic movie that we're finally getting. Uh, how excited are you? I'm actually at level 7. Level 7? Yes, which means I'm not going woohoo or anything. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because from what I've seen so far, the best part of it is that he really... My problem before when Zack Snyder did uh, Batman vs. Superman is right. he kind of like spoiled the end for you when he showed... Dark side. Yeah. Not Dark Side, Doomsday. Yeah. And you knew, okay, Superman's gonna die in Batman vs. Superman. Correct. Here he showed Dark Side, he showed everything, but you realize one thing is he's not showing too much at all. Yeah. Which was the biggest complaint we had was you're showing us too a much. Lot. By the time the movie comes out we're just gonna be bored. Right. And, and pretty much what it was. Yeah. It really what it was. I mean the scene when we got in Batman vs. Superman uh, the Wonder Woman scene, we knew we were hyped up for that, but we don't know how it was going to be approached. And when that scene came out, I think everyone was like ecstatic to see Superman, Wonder Woman in the middle, and Batman on the other side, and then playing the music in the background, and then ready to go. And the thing that made it more epic is that the theme song that, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Zack Snyder, but the guy who composes music for the movie. Yeah. Uh, Hans Summer or something like that. Forgive okay. my pronunciation of your name, dude. But <laughs> his uh, ability to play, you know, to really bring out the best of every character. Like, he right. did it for Christopher Nolan's Batman. Which is awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. The, the song right there. And then the composure for the composition, I think is the word. I would say, yeah. For Wonder Woman, you feel that Amazonian, like, warrior coming mm, out. The fighting. beat. The yeah. freaking, like, the old school... The war emblem, like it just gave you the heightness of it, and that was, I think that's why I stick with that freaking theme song as my wife's and, ringtone. So yeah, badass. I actually badass. use it when I'm sleepy at work and I need something to hype me up. <laughs> I either got that or I had the tiger, and it's like dun 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 dun. dun. You know, you feel that little like heightness. It's just yeah. like rolling through the blood flowing, the pressure, the beats, the drums. It's like and, it's flowing with you. You know something wild is going to happen here. Like I think I, so, too. I have a feeling with all those hours that we're going to get, it's mm-hmm. going to be crazy. Yeah, and it's and kind of like what he did in Batman vs. Superman where he gave us sneak peeks about what's coming up in the movie. Mm-hmm. The only difference I feel like this time around is that it the, the sneak peeks of what was already given to us, but in his format, in a better format of it. Yeah. So I think what makes it more exciting... Even though we're gonna see Dark Side and it wasn't shown too much in the first film, it, I'm not as bad and mad that he's showing it too much because it's, you don't know what's gonna happen. I really, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't it's know. Because it's kind of like it has that comic book feel where if you open a comic book, on the cover you have the comic book everything. villain, right? So you have everything on the cover, but right. you don't know what's gonna happen until you open it. Yes, you start reading it exactly. Same thing as you watch a movie when you buy the film. You get a little trailer like, oh, Darkseid is coming. What's going to happen? The right. Justice League has to fight him. Yes. So we're finally getting that type of trailer where right. you're not giving too much. You're not tossing too much uh, stuff to the flame, yeah. as they would say. Agreed. And I think I think it's something that uh, a lot of fans were worried about once he started, uh, when he actually got approved to do his own cut. A lot of fans were kind of, I think me including myself, when you've yeah. got the image of, 
his little right hand man, uh, bringing him out there and showing him. I think the guy that does all the experimentations on him, not Mother M or uh, however you call her. I forgot his name, but I know you're talking about. But the other one that they kind of like, uh, they're kind of advertising right now. So yeah. it's it's uh, when that was shown, I'm like in my mind, it's not bad that they showed him because in comic books or even the cartoons, you knew he was gonna be there. So it's yeah. it wasn't really like a big thing, but it's it's. I guess it's expected if you're going to show him. So, and also, what is it? Grandma Goodness? Or Grandma Goodness. Like there you go. That's the name. Yeah. I'm like, when they showed her, too, you didn't see her completely. You hey, just yes. saw her, like, just show up and that's it. You're Which not, is like, oh, okay, that's so, fine. But it's yeah. cool to see you on the freaking big screen. Like, Finally. Okay. And it's like, you don't know what she's going to do. Yeah. Yes. You, is she just going to show up and be like, hey, what's up? I'm here. Or is she going to go out there and wreak havoc with these Correct. guys? Exactly. Is she going to fight, actually? Is she going to already have her own group of girls to fight off Justice League? So it's kind of like interesting if that's coming to play. Like, is she looking to recruit females and, and getting those uh, Amazonians and some of the ones that are, like, let's say, that are mad at what's going on and say, you know, I'm done with this crap, and then her stealing them and recruiting them? And setting up more of a war, like a big army for Darkseid. Exactly. So it's going to be very, it's it's interesting. Very interesting. Four hours long, it looks like, I believe. And I'm not mad at that. No. If it's four hours long, who freaking cares? It's on and, HBO Max. It yeah. can pause and play anytime you want. And the best part is, it's HBO Max. Which Thank means you. you don't have to worry about going to the movie theater and paying Thank like... 30 bucks and sitting there. And, yeah. And watching there and sitting there for a long yeah. time and... Be nervous to go for a bathroom break. And the best part is you can rewind anything yep. you miss. Hey, thank you. So you could go back. I'm not mad at all. No. I'm excited. <laughs> but like HBO Max has done the smartest thing I could ever imagine because yes. one, okay, yes, everyone's subscribing to your channel, fifteen dollars mm-hmm. a month. Right. One way or another, you're still making money. Mm-hmm. But the thing that generates it more is that people, we've been wanting something where we can watch a movie when it comes out. Yeah. In the comfort of our, not in the comfort of our home, but more of a peaceful environment. Yeah. You ever been to movies where, while you're at the movie theater, somebody's yapping all over here. Chit-chatting like, chatting like yeah, a mug. Yeah, chit-chatting like a mug. And you saying hear. something about the movie before it comes out. Like, shut your butt up. That's not, I want to know about that scene. Or Shut like, up. like me, I, I watch the movie with somebody sometimes, and I always hate it when people are like, ask me, you know, what's going to happen, what's happening here, and yeah. who's that, and... And I'm like, I don't know who that I don't is. Know, man. I'm watching the same as you, man. Shut up. Leave me alone. Yeah. Let me pay attention. And now here, you can be like, pause. Let me look it up. <laughs> pause again. All right, let's watch it. You know, it, it saves you that time of so much, um, like a movie goer. You yeah. want to enjoy the film as it is. Right. And if you miss a spot, like, oh, I gotta go here. You know, I gotta do this. Exactly. You're not gonna like really miss it much. Exactly. So I think that's the one thing I like about HBO Max Big going it's way a, out of its way to do that. It's beneficial for sure. So going into the freaking uh, Snyder Cut. Now, it did release about, a, I think, a six-part. He named every single six-part of it. I think he split it up to kind of give it, like, chapters, you would say. Mm-hmm. And now, before we get into the names of the chapters, could this is this a good idea on, on his end? Is it necessary to put that in the movie? I think... Yes, because it's already been overhyped. Okay. So I guess he wants to like continue the hype. Got you. But too much hype could also kill there, it. Yeah, can kill it. Agreed. I mean, there's us as sports fans. We were overhyped about Manny Peck and Floyd Mayweather. Big time. And that became like a sleep bus for a lot of people. Exactly. So and same thing with like some Super Bowl games. Yeah. You know, we watch the Super Bowl, and there's times where even the Super Bowl you get overhyped and true. It the flame. Just dies down. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I think when it came to them releasing the, the sixth part and naming the chapters, it seemed like for it being a long movie, I felt like it was if one of those old school type of movies like a Godfather or whatnot and kind of showing that there's there's this section of the movie of the beginning like the, of a storytelling. Now we're moving on. We're getting ready to move on to the next section of the person's life to oh. this section, this scene of the movie. Then we're somewhat noticing that the, it's like a small pause and moving to the next session of the movie, and it completes it. So I feel like it's a smart way, d- directive-wise, to kind of give it that final goodness, I think, out of it, or final feel from the movie. That's and it's a storytelling. So yeah. I think it's, I think he's looking at it More in like that aspect. More like Shakespearean 
I feel to it. Like yeah. when you go to watch a Shakespeare play, exactly, you're gonna have like even there, you're gonna have the whole uh, what's that thing called? It's like the book that you get mm-hmm. that tells you everything that's going on. It's right. like you know, chapter one. This is gonna go on. Correct. And it tells you everything. You actually follow with it. Right. So I think that's what he's doing here. I he's like, like it. chapter one, chapter two. Mm-hmm. Imagine if this comes out to be a big hit for him. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, exactly. But I, I want to oh, get to that okay, part, you know okay, what I mean? Okay. That's going to be a good question to talk about again. Right, right, hold right. on, little, like, right. it's going to be good. But it just, it's, it's, it's the beneficial to the movie, I think, that obviously is exciting us but about it. What I was going to hit you with is, imagine if this becomes more of a, a new strategy. Yeah. And not just for him, but other directors look at it and say, you know what? Why don't we do it ourselves? Okay. That's True. what I was going to go with. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That I would saved be, myself, it, everybody. <laughs> 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 now, naming naming the chapters in it. Uh, we'll start off with chapter one or part one, you want to put it as. Uh, don't count on it, Batman. No. Don't count on it, Batman. Now, we've seen oh, just like the first one. Funny Batman, don't count on getting Superman to team up with you. Okay. Gotcha. You, you know, I'm guessing right there is like he died. I think he's still like Batman's thinking, I could bring this guy back to yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. Something big is happening. And, you know, the mother box theory works. Right. You could get Superman to come in and help us. And Alfred's like, you know, you pretty much put him in where he's at. Exactly. What makes you think that he's going to come up and say, hey, uh, you need my help. Let's go. Let's go with it. Correct. Correct the mundo. Part two, the age of heroes, which I guess you say in this term would be him actually getting everybody together. Yeah. Everyone's actually getting together. And... I would actually say for this one would be more so of giving getting everybody's story, you know what I mean? A uh, little bit of a little bit of time frame for everybody to tell their story, like the Aquaman, him actually going down and talking with Mira for a little bit and kind of seeing him reach the throne, uh, getting the the um, the trident, the trident, uh, and then also Flash. Cyborg story, uh, Cyborg. Flash's story. So I guess this would be more like. A backstory to everybody. In a, in a way. Yeah. Kind of like how they were trying to do with Jason Whedon's version or whatever. Josh. Freaking, Josh Whedon. I don't really care. I call him Jason, Jason Voorhees just because of how bad he is. Um, you know, in that vision that he tried to do with it, but I think this is where he's actually using this part to kind of tell that story. Yeah. So, because... that makes sense. I like that. Uh, part three, beloved mother, beloved son. I Clark like, and Martha. Right. It, that's yeah. what I thought so, too. Going with that. But then my also mind came into play of the mother box. Oh, and the son being cyborg created exactly. into the mother box. Or even at that, the what's his face? The one that, the evil guy, that Steppenwolf. Oh, Steppenwolf. When, how he yeah. could, like how he praises the mother box being the mother of him and whatever. And because stuff like he, that. I think he's trying to use it to become more stronger than Darkseid. I think he? so, too. I, I think, think that's that was like his original mission is to take it and be stronger. Yeah. Even the dark side is trying to use it for a different reason, and right. they both are like he's convinced dark side that you know I'm gonna do it for you, but in reality it's like I'm, I'm gonna do it, it for, for myself. It's kind of like uh, kind of like Star Screen in yeah. a way, like going after his own comic plan for himself. So that goes with that. That's my thought when I heard that name. Uh, part four, change machine, uh, cyborg story. I think this is where if it's change machine, this is gonna be cyborg kind of. Coming out of his shell, learning his learning his mother box and the system and whatnot, and mm, probably accepting it. Yeah, going with it and stuff like that. And then at that, Batman getting all his stuff or whatever, possibly. Like mm. the new Batmobile, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he saw that tank that he brought. It up. looks dope. Yeah, it looks friggin' awesome. It probably. looks like the Batman comic book one. Yeah, from no lie. Uh, what was it like? The Dark Knight. Yes. Um, Returns. Yes, those look pretty badass. Uh, part five, all think all the king's horses. Now, this, in my opinion, could be dark side, meaning mm-hmm. to dark side. His whole army coming mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. 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 That could be dope. Part six, something darker. Which Superman? Superman. I have a feeling I've been reading theories, okay. and I hate to hit everybody with a theory <coughs> uh, that I've heard. Mm-hmm. Dark side is going to control Superman's mind. Ooh. Really? Yeah. What what plays in that theory? I remember the dream sequence in Batman vs Superman where Batman goes into like this deserted island land. Yeah. And he starts fighting off all these like soldiers and everything, and Correct. then all of a sudden he's trapped. Yes. 
and he Superman. fights Superman. Yeah. But in wasn't it the reason now now us knowing comic books or whatever, knowing the story or whatnot and seeing it in animations and stuff, wasn't it because of his son finally like at that point in time, Lois had a son, they were all like the baby was already born and something happened where they got killed. And that's what in turn him to going evil because they died. Well actually there's different um stories. Okay. That could change it. I mean, there's also the fake Superman that was brought in, uh, Reign of Superman, mm-hmm. which was actually created by Darkseid. Oh, ah, and okay, those, I see. remember that guy that got blown up in Batman vs Superman? Yeah. Imagine if that's the fake Superman. Got you. Because okay. he was brought back in the image of Superman, <clears throat> and he fights Clark. Right. But uh, the Clark that comes back is the one with long hair, mm-hmm. and he has like a little bearded thing on, and yep. he has a black suit. Yep. And he fights the Superman, okay. and he, uh, I think he ends up killing him with a gunshot or something like that. But gotcha. gotcha. You never know where it could go. Where go with that. Okay, very good. Now, with these titles set, what is the theory? Well, I guess that we kind of played about that with the title set, which is the theory for each one. So we kind of went that as we went the title. So that's mm-hmm. good. Um, before I move on to the next question, I want to ask about, since we brought up Superman and his black suitness. Were you a little bit sad that we didn't get the long hair, uh, Superman, the, you know, the beard, Superman, or whatnot, when they brought out the black suited? Like, we're excited for the black suit. Don't get me no wrong. No matter what. But I think when they had better got the image that I think would have happened that he, Zack Snyder was going for in the beginning before he set the movie with the long and hair and the buildness or whatever, the ruggedness. I think because I am kind of sad that we didn't get the Superman we are hoping to get. Yeah. But also, we got a whole jacked up story from Zack Snyder with Batman vs. Superman. When, True. You know, you killed Superman all too early. And that True. was a big complaint of mine. Yeah. So, here is like just, you now have to, kind of like a roller coaster, just jump on and go on for the ride and see where it takes you. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, next question. Now, since Zack Snyder stated there will be a big surprise for the ending, what's your theory on that? What do you think is, would be the big surprise? Well, we know... If um, I'm thinking that it's gonna be probably the the end is gonna end up with uh, Joker. Um, what's his name, Deathstroke, and all of them teaming up uh-huh. and creating the uh the Dark Justice League. Yeah, I forgot the name though. It's uh Legion of Doom. Legion of Doom. <laughs> uh, I love, I love that. <laughs> love those guys. <laughs> or uh, it could also mean that probably someone who's not. We're not expecting to show up. Might show up near the end of the movie. Got you. Because, I mean, there's been speculation. Well, I get that, that leads to the next question. Who would appear would be shocked you the most? So, that means, in essence, what character? Um, it could be, now we've got reports of the Green Lantern Corp, of course, was supposed to be in it. Uh, or at least getting an image of someone from the corpse. Um, and also Man- Martian Manhunter. Yeah. I think that was also the main two characters that were kind of looking into being in the Justice League movie because since that they're normally the, the actually the founding fathers of them and they're not there from the first the first version of Justice League that we got. So who do you think either one would show up or both? I think Martian Manager would show up uh, halfway through the film mm-hmm. to help out. Who halfway through the film? Yeah, that so that's a big surprise during the film, then. Yeah, I think that's of a commercial be, that like, we haven't got yet. Uh, yeah, that's one of those got where it. we don't expect it to happen, but he's gonna show up no matter what. Got it, love it. But the one that I think is gonna surprise everyone, and my theory's always been that uh, the guy who comes out in Star Trek as Captain Kirk. Star Trek as Captain Kirk. Chris oh yeah, yeah, Chris Pine. Pine. Yeah, yeah. I think. He's going to surprise everybody that, like, he's probably a family member of, uh, Hal Jordan would be a family member of Steve Trevor. Right. And all of a sudden, this guy shows up looking like Just Steve like Trevor. Him. Yeah. And he's now Hal Jordan Green Lantern. <laughs> I would I go with it. that. I love it. I would love that. I mean, no lie, when he was depicted as, uh, Trevor in freaking uh, Wonder Woman, I was kind of sad. Because, because that meant, like, that meant... He would he wouldn't have that role or opportunity to play that role, which I think for him he embodies it. I I would see it like a yeah. different, oh, so much better version of Ryan Reynolds comparing him when he been uh, the uh, Green Lantern, just because he's not as goofy and outrageous with his jokes. It's always more of um like a one. Sorry, 
Yeah, like a, a reaction. One, yeah, reaction to it. Yeah. He's not so sarcastic. They, exactly. Yes. That one, and I'll go with that. Brian Reynolds is more of, uh, if you ever watch all of his movies, like it's waiting. Very vulgar. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So very that's vulgar. like, he needs somebody who's mo- less vulgar and more yeah. uh, just like, kind of like a father figure type. In a way. Even when he's not. Yes. Agreed. And just more of like, he has to have a relationship with you to kind of get the humorous in it. So I, I, that, I, would, I wanted that to happen. So. If that does, if that does, I love it. That would be awesome. That would be great. Uh, now, if fans pressure Snyder to continue with the Justice League 2, would he? Start off with that question. I think if we pressure him to do it, it's not really up to him to say yes. Mm-hmm. It's up to the studio. Okay. So, I've always accused Warner Bros. of having an executive table of idiots. Big time. And they yes. still are. Yeah. I, I feel like they're still trying to put their two cents in something. And they can't figure out what they're doing. At all. No. They, they, huh? They're trying to pressure in so much. Like, follow and the format that you're doing in the cartoons. Why is it that you can do an animation perfectly? But you can't make a live action film. It and doesn't the reason make why any is sense. Because they don't put much effort into the cartoons. Like, in a way, let's say this. Um, like when I create a wrestler in my game league. Correct. When I create another guy, I'm not really out there, you know, I try to create him just as good as the last one was. Right. But you know, when I created uh, the crow, I was just like, oh, Eric Draven, let's put the crow, you know, let's put his mask on and everything. Mm-hmm. And little by little, I kept on building him up. Yeah. Changing moves, changing the format yeah. of him. Correct. Now the other guy, I just went out, you know, just toss him out there and... The weird part is, the guy that I'm more popular with, like the more the one I'm more comfortable playing with, is yeah. one I didn't really like showcase yeah. so much. Yeah, and that's what I feel like is happening here is Warner Bros. If you look at their cartoon movies and mm-hmm. everything, you realize Batman: uh, Mask of the Phantasm wasn't right. really advertised at all. At all. And it and was then, phenomenal. It's yes. a fan favorite. It's a classic. It's considered the best Batman movie today. The best. That's correct. And because of the love interest angle that he has. Yes. So now here we are, a few years later, live action films. Mm-hmm. And we had so many different live action films based on like my generation and yours. Correct. Even though I'm only seven years or six years older than correct. you. Correct. So now, if you look at uh, me, I grew up with the 89 Batman. Michael mm-hmm. Keaton. Michael right. freaking Keaton. Michael I'm sorry. Freaking. Put even, some respect on the brother's name. Even though this is uh, just us and we're supposed to be like ourselves, <laughs> no matter where we are, Michael freaking Keaton gets mentioned. <laughs> so, <laughs> I even yelled at the microphone for That's, that one. There you go. So, you are Christian Bale's era, you know? That's true. And now Alice's kids are Ben Affleck. That's true. So, as we keep going, um, I forgot where I, was, where I was going with this. <laughs> <laughs> but if you see what I'm saying is everyone has an opinion of what they want mm-hmm. Warner mm-hmm. Bros in a way they look at the our, our opinions and they're like no what we want is to do what Disney's doing we want the money we want the money right so they toss everything at once and try to see what sticks exactly if they would have got somebody like you know uh, if, if they would have got this is for this way Zack Snyder I, like I said before I think is perfect for be- like DC films, his storytelling, his action, his darkness that comes with it, I believe is perfect for DC films. I think, yes, you if you get a producer to say, hey, you know, in light of the meaning behind of their, their I guess their, um, their, the misery that they're dealing with themselves and dealing with that part of the darkness of the movie, use this section. This section is more of a light friendly type of scene. So let's upbeat this scene and change it for you. Kind of like what they did with Shazam. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, change that tempo up a little bit. Like, Shazam, I felt like Shazam's theme for it was perfect for what it was. I don't think they should have changed it any darker. The story was fine. The villain itself, okay, fine. You maybe could have did a little bit of work on that. But that's nitpicking. But yeah. even then, it actually was a good film. Yeah, that's I thought it was say. fine. Especially because the villain himself, he brought out all those, like, demons that he had in himself. Correct. So, of course, you knew Billy Batson was going to have to have... The family. His, yeah, the family. And no up. lie, that was the dopest part of the movie scene. Everybody changed, and it, it, it was phenomenal. It was awesome. And that's why it's like, if you focus more on trying to build one film at a time, mm-hmm. and try to uh, get us... 
I think the more important thing is make us familiar with characters. Even though, like, DC and Warner Bros. argument was, you guys are already familiar with them. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are familiar with the characters, but not the actors portraying the characters. Exactly, because each actor is going to have their own vision of the person that they're trying to portray. Even though they know the background of it, but they still have that aspect and mindset of their own creativity and saying, well, what if I do this version and kind of stir this up and I see it this way and trying to act that out for us. And then so. not just that, but even afterwards, like think of uh, the fact that we've seen Wonder Woman appear right. in Zack Snyder's version of Wonder Woman. Yes. We've seen her appear in uh, Patty Jenkins version of Wonder Woman. Correct. And we've seen her appear in Josh Whedon's version of Wonder Woman. Correct. Three different versions of Wonder Woman, three different clothing styles. Yes. Three different attitudes. Correct. Now, the weird part is it's the same actress. Yes. But here and there, we still nitpick the fact that, like, probably the first movie that she did, Wonder Woman 1. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Part 2 was, yeah. Horrible. Yes. It's awesome. And it's the same team. What happened there, though, is apparently, you know, you got the executive producers jumping in on it, saying, we want this and this and this and this. But that's another thing, too. And the question of that would be, was it the studio laying off a little bit and letting her, Patty Jenkins actually show the vision that she wanted? Or was it them being pressured? I think that's the question of us not knowing what really happened there. Yes. Was the first film of Patty having full control... And actually giving her version, but also wasn't. The same thing for a second film. Was it that she had the full control or, or wasn't? wasn't? So we don't know that per se because of the fact that both films are somehow dramatically different different of a story and how and the per, how the acting was. And even with that, we could have had so much could have been <laughs> done different for the sequel. Yeah. Um, if Penny Jenkins, from what I heard, is that she didn't really want to bring see Trevor back. Correct. So she was trying to force that not to happen, but the studio was like, no, oh, really? no, we need that love story. Did not know that. So then that means the studio's been nitpicking in this. Yes. Gotcha. And that's why I call it the studio of executive table of idiots because instead of trying to get into your, like, instead of trying to say, you know, we want this, you're going to give us this. Why don't you let the director do what the director Trust does? Them. Trust, Trust them, them. See what they do with their film. And, I mean, of course, I know you had bad um, filming is because of Dark Knight, uh, Batman Returns. Right. You had like a bad problem there. Yeah. But look what you did with Batman Forever, which exactly. was still good. Yes. But it wasn't as good as Batman 1. Right. And then Batman and Robin, of course, even though SG3 liked it, <laughs> um, it was too much of, okay, it was child friendly. Cartoonish. Cartoonish. I would say. But for me, it was like, you know, um, I'd rather have, I've been wanting to see a Batman who kind of fits the animated style more. Mm-hmm. And we were missing that in here. Got you. So, same thing with Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had her, the whole film, you know, she's this girl who's just madly in love with Steve Trevor. So, right. you kind of like, you kill the fact that she's supposed to be this warrior who's out to kick butt. And then not really depend on a man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that was the one thing about Wonder Woman's story was was I felt ready for my little girls to kind of look up to the fact that not necessarily you don't need a man to live in life, but the fact that you don't really necessarily have to depend on him all the time. You know what I mean? And for a Wonder Woman herself, she's always been the type of uh, character where let letting you know I can kick butt and letting you know there are sometimes I'm vulnerable, but that's very little more so than I, how I can kick butt in the meantime. But I like the acquaintances. I like, I would love to talk to somebody, have a chit chat, like how they had the flirtation between her and Batman. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't where it was so noticeable to the point where she had to lower her guard down and pretend to be very girly. I wouldn't say girly, I just want to put it that tone, but being very, like, how do you say, um, kind of, kind of just letting the other Cheesy. person. Huh? Cheesy. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I'll go yeah. with that. Very cheesy about it. You know what I mean? Like, she still did it in her way, but yeah, she was showing it that I, I'm still attracted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I still have feelings. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I'm just this person. So, either you know, deal with it or don't. Yeah, that's and what I, I was going to say. Awesome. 
And another thing I was going to point out is that um, if you wanted to bring, bring C. Trevor back, I think that whole, like, the whole story was way off. Yeah. But I think we should say that for a different for the, time. Cause yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. But it, it, it goes with the thought. So I think, I think with that is... Uh, would he so, if he comes back to the, would he come back to the um Justice League in return for making part two? I would say yes, but with minimal studio um executives like getting on him. Because I feel like even with this one, they were getting on him too yeah. as well. So like I, let him do his vision, right? But have somebody who understands what he's trying to say. Not just what he's trying to say, but uh, what's the thing? The whole thing of the comic book universe. Like, what understands the comic books, understands the movie, like the superheroes and everything. Gotcha, okay. The fandom. Okay. So, understands what the fans want to see yeah. to kind of, like, be like, you know, you're going a little too far here. Yeah. I know it's your vision, but, yeah. you know, give the fans what they want to. Yeah, there you go. Like that. Now, uh, Zach might direct a solo movie. Not sure what that could be. With rumors of him actually doing a solo with Wonder Woman, with Wonder Woman, movie, do you feel like it's the right move? Yes. A Did Wonder you Woman. See movie? how he brought Wonder Woman out. Okay. In that film, he actually over. He kind of like how can you say, um, when we were all expecting Wonder Woman to show up, mm-hmm. you know, if you watch the cartoons, uh, we were like, we were expecting her to be, kind of like. Stale. Yeah. And he brings this woman out like, you know, I'm here to kick butt. But. I'm here to, you know, I'm one of these guys too. I'm part of the team. Yeah. And the f- way that I like the fact that she shows up is Batman's about to get killed. Mm-hmm. And this dude brings a big laser beam right at him. Yep. And all of a sudden you just see, boom, you know, the she shield breaks it. She lifts her face up. And she's like in warrior mode. <laughs> and I've never been more hyped. Even And the problem is, and here's my problem with Patty Jenkins and anyone who's directed one of my own so far. Yeah. You mistimed the song. Yeah. The song should be played when one of about to fight the main dude. Yeah. And you're playing it throughout the whole film yeah. at wrong points. Like, oh, she's just going to crash through this building, beat like these five guys up. Right. Dun, 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 you know, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, no, no. no. Uh, the best way <laughs> to like, do no, it. No, 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 she puts the guard down. That song starts playing. Yeah. And you know, a fight's about to break out. Right, exactly. And she's about to be doing what she has to do to get, you know, the upper hand on it. Yeah, yeah. I can go with that. Because I feel like, I I kind of see what your point is when it comes to the very the first film itself. Because in, in the Batman versus Superman, one in that version of Wonder Woman, I'm really kind of understanding what you're talking about on his vision of her. Because she... Did the she vulnerabilized herself just a little bit to kind of give her sexiness in, in her non Wonder Woman state? Okay, when she's actually dressed up and she's trying to be with the regular she's the a very civilian. Like, Let's put it yeah. that way. When she's trying to be a civilian, she channeled that very well to be like, I am still this, but gave her you gave that impression like, but I, I there's something about me deeper that you don't know. And it's and go that, out, uh, out. that exotic feel. Yeah. So, remember when I told you when I saw her in Fast and Furious, I was like, that should be Wonder Woman. Right. It's because Gal Gadot, or Gal Gadot, I think her Gal name Gadot. is. Gal Gadot. She's like, you know, she embodies this, like, real exotic uh, presence in her. Yeah. And if you know how to bring that out in a woman, yeah, you're pretty much getting Princess Diane. Yeah. Which is what you're supposed to do. A woman who could control the room when she walks in. Yeah. And that's what she did with Zack Snyder. And even uh, with uh, Patty Jenkins in the first film, she could control the whole film. Gotcha. Now, imagine Zack Snyder doing that one more time. Mm -hmm. And with his, um, how do you say? uh, With his vision? Not just that, but kind of like what he did with Krypton and all that stuff. His visual art. Oh, uh, um. Imagery? Imagery. There you go. Yeah. So yes, imagine that, that. Yes. what would happen if his imagery hits off for a Wonder Woman film. Yeah. I would or, love... That yeah. would be nice. No lie. I'm I like, think it would go very well the way he would play 
the Amazon, Amazon itself just because of what he did in 300. Yeah. And, like, it just, I feel like to him to go for it, adapt to that and kind of get into that would be, oh, man, it's actually intriguing. It's very totally. intriguing. And especially because now, okay, of course, we still have, uh, you know, you already used the big villain. Yeah. Cheetah can still come back. I think so. But now, imagine if you bring a season fishery or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, you have so much more villains you could bring out mm-hmm. with Zack Snyder take it over. Right. Dude, that would be crazy. I think Zack Snyder should get his hands on Cheetah. And then, here's my opinion, though. Zack Snyder takes over Wonder Woman. Uh-huh. I would put Patty Jenkins over Superman. Put Patty Jenkins on Superman? She has that ability to put that Superman touch in her movie, like how she did with part you two. You know what? That would be true because of the fact of how Superman is. Mm-hmm. And how, you know, how somewhat cheesy He's, they're supposed to be. Especially, especially in the Clark Kent version. Yeah. Wow. So okay, you know, Patty I never Jenkins. noticed that. There you go. Well, that's a good idea. And that's what I was thinking because she, Patty Jenkins seems to be a big Superman fan. Yeah. Know, like, and I feel like she's trying to touch on that and possibly looking at Doing that for Wonder Woman, but I, Wonder Woman don't need that. No, I don't think she ever did at oh. all whatsoever. But Her, the one that does is Superman. Yeah, exactly. That because, little, like, especially in this verse, I think that's a lot of what a lot of complaints when it comes to this verse itself is that we don't see that. Even no, no. Henry Kimball's, uh Clark Kent version is very. He just seems like a jock that's trying to be a nerd. Yeah, and and I think that's the issue. So it's like we don't want that. We want the nerd. Only. You want the nerd who like fumbles and and falls. even when he is Superman, he's the he's still a um he's still a corny guy. It really, in all honesty, if you see Superman, he's still somewhat of a corny dude, just because of the jokes or like, like the the in, the sensitivity that's in him. Like, I, I, well, I guess, oh uh, yeah, supposedly. Sure, you know, like um, like okay, when he talks to Batman. He's always trying to crack a joke, even at the worst time. Yeah, exactly. And Batman's like, you know, don't not joke that. right now. Don't do that right now. Like yeah, and, when, then, uh, and for Batman not having powers, he's the serious one of the whole bunch. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you kind of have to hear that. So I agree I, with that. I, I mean, believe... he's not as goofy like Shazam should be, or like a teenage wise. No. But he's but still. But he's kind of like your. Uh, okay, how do you put it? He's kind of like your homeboy who tries to cheer you up at the right moment. Yeah, yeah. When things are bad. Right, exactly. Like, it would be like, you know, it. when uh, when he saved, in the cartoon movie, uh, I think it was Public Enemy. Yeah. Okay. When Batman gets in that uh, ship uh-huh. that was built that looks like Superman and Batman mix, and yeah. he's going out there to, like, save the day. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's something else. So, Batman in Justice League, one of the, like, cartoon episodes. Mm-hmm. He's coming down, and he has to, like, he left Flash and Martian Manhunter on the ship. Okay. So he comes down in the ship that's supposed to, like, burn up and, like, explode somewhere. Uh Uh-huh. So he tells Superman, I'm manually driving the ship. Yeah. Superman, from beating the dude up that he's beating up right there, Uh he's like, Batman. So he flies to go save Batman because that's, like, his brother to him. True. He opens it up, saves Batman, pulls him to the side, and he's like... You always have to save the day, don't you? <laughs> and Batman's like, right back at you, you know, like yeah. <laughs> and Batman's, you know. That's true. It's it's it, that connection there. I think that's what's missing too mm-hmm. in the film. Well, I think they should. And they you kind of like that. got a hint of it when, you know, he's like, "Where's the spear?" And he's like, "I lost it." <laughs> in the movie, you know. Yeah, that's so true. That's how like you should have that, but Superman shouldn't be so jockey. Uh, yeah, so jockey. He, I think that's what it is. Shouldn't be like, so jockey. I mean. I give you the I give you the aspect of Henry Cavill of being Superman, which is all phenomenal. I think he deserves to keep going with this character because I think he no lie when Man of Steel came out, that's I I said for Jump Street that is the perfect Superman right now for this yeah. day and age. But give him the right tools and just finally let him let go. You know what I mean? Let him be with the whole and with the whole scenes. The other thing that makes me think that Zack Snyder would be good for Wonder Woman. Yeah, three hundred. With three hundred. Think of the whole atmosphere of 300. Okay. And think of the Amazonian warriors and all that stuff. Yeah. She kind of like, it kind of embodies that type of style. Yeah. That would be good. I think that would actually for real. Okay, guys. Now, next question, and I guess last question of the day. Uh, if Zack Snyder does not direct Wonder Woman, what other film do you think he should direct? So, I, John, what, what, what do you think? Actually, 
I also like the way he portrayed Batman. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Only just, he just has to make uh, him smarter. Wait a minute. Yeah, you know what? I just thought about that. I'm like, mm. I'm like, look, look. I like the imagery of Batman. I love the image of Batman completely. I yeah. love how he looks. I love the costume. I love the freaking the mobiles that he gave him, especially that freaking Batmobile in Batman vs Superman was freaking awesome. It oh, was they, like, awesome. The little, mm. Yes. But I like what I like about it, Zack Snyder. Even if you just don't bring him back for uh, to direct the whole film, but mm. just bring him back for the fight sequences. Yes. Because his fighting style for Batman it's is like great. The, yes. It's it's how it is in the comics, the, or, or even in the cartoons that we're so used to of him kicking ass. And remember how he talked about that uh, when he plays the theme song, he plays it at the right moment. Yeah, and that's the right moment. He's kicking yeah, ass. If you're listening to Batman, like all of a sudden you get hyped because you hear that. Beat just flowing up, yeah, it was getting like, louder by louder boom, by louder. Boom, yes, boom, boom, boom. like yeah. when he was fighting Superman, you know, it's the beat was going very slow, and yeah. he was like fighting Superman, and he's losing. Right, all of a sudden the beat turns into something else, and Batman's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, you know, yeah, I didn't it, mean to." Right, right, right. But then he's like, "Oh, here, boom, another, another gas." Guy. And now all of a sudden you get the real Batman. He's like, you know, you think you had me, you know, you think you're a hero, but you're not. I'm not, Batman. Yeah, you haven't fought as you haven't fought people as much as I have. So guess what? <laughs> so it does make it does make sense. And I think uh, just, he needs the right writer. I think for him to just be a fight choreographer for those films, correct, would be better. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think the input that Zach should be getting in in that would be just that particular role. And as far as the visual effects, I think his visual effects team is oh, the best phenomenal. in the business. I think it's the best in the Especially business. Especially what he did with Krypton. Yes, big time. And I want to talk to you one day about Superman because I want to bring in. I have such a good film for like if they ever do a Man of Steel two type of thing. Mm, I'll, I'll go with you on that. We'll one. have to do that one day. Definitely. But yeah, I think. What about you? I think uh, for him to tap in, I would have to say. Uh, it could be anyone too. Hawkman. Um, no lie, I I, I would Green love. Arrow. I actually would like him to go after. I would like him to go after freaking the Flash. The Flash. Oh, I think he. Would, he I think he. I think that would be one that he could go dap into. Would be the Flash. If not the Flash, give him the Green Lantern Corps. Now here's a question I'm going to ask you, and it's uh, one that I didn't put. You know, on he there? didn't put on the mm-hmm. show me or you. Um, if Zack Snyder doesn't do a Justice League 2, mm-hmm. and let's say they finally learn how to build it up, right? What director do you feel would be good to do a Justice League 2? To take the place? Yeah. Um, I think, oh, good. You know what? I think if they move up the director who's doing Superman versus Superman and Lois TV oh. shows, I don't know why. I think he, I think the storytelling for that would be great. I think the the writing team. I think would be best when it comes to a Justice League movie and Justice League. The difference between Justice League and Marvel is the fact that the dynamic of the characters that's in them. I think thus DC has a very like stronger dynamic of their superheroes compared to Marvel, and because Marvel's characters really wasn't the the head honchos. They were really more like, I guess you'd say like the grunts and decided let's get together and let's just fight everybody type of thing like that. And what made them, sh- what made them more important was the fact that they were together and then you kind of understood them and who they were team. individually. Yes. Yeah. But DC, on the other hand, was Batman was a dynamic person all by himself. Superman was a dynamic person all by himself. Wonder Woman was definitely a dynamic lady. And then it, for some reason, a thing happened and they just became, they just flew in the same team because of one main evil that was just they had to come together for that reason and that's why I like uh, when we watched Justice League the cartoon you know? yeah remember the first three episodes were Martian Manhunter being introduced into the team exactly right and they had to take on like the white Martian race yes. I was like that that would have been exactly the way you bring it in um, I would say so they're yeah. intriguing into it yeah because it's it's a it, it's an issue kind of like the scrolls it's, it, it's an invasion so obviously they all have to they have their own set issue with the invasion and now what brings them together is the fact that is this one particular issue 
and that's why they have to collide together. And Batman could have been playing that. And here's the thing I didn't like about Whedon's, and I'm not sure if it's going to happen with this one too. Okay. Batman always portrays that ideal that I don't need them. But he does. But he does. Yes. It's and like, he only does because they're humanizing him as as a person in a way. And the way that makes Batman more interesting to me and the reason why I like him so much mm-hmm. is because even though he acts like he doesn't need them, you yeah. ever realize how he makes them believe that they need him more than he does True. them? True. True. And at the end, Batman's always like the guy who finds a way to finish the villain off. Yes. Even though probably it's Superman who does it or someone else does it, but everyone's going to come to believe, oh, Batman's the one that Batman did Batman had the plan already yeah. all along. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. That's what's there. missing in these things is that Batman needs to be that guy that, you know, I oh, I created the deal, I did this, I did that, mm-hmm. but it wasn't me who finished them, you know. Right, and I think that's, the, and that's why I would say also, well, I agree with you on, Zack Snyder jumping into a Batman movie, but it, it's the one issue that I had with Zack Snyder doing Batman was the fact that you made him seem so dumb. dumb. Yeah, and I'm gonna say it vulgar like that, but dumb. You made him look dumb. You made him look like he wasn't smarter than Lex Luthor. You made him look like he wasn't intelligent enough to figure out what the whole plan was in general of the day. You made him look like he didn't know how to defeat Superman in general until. It was just pure anger that really bolted everything and all in all. It wasn't his detectiveness at all whatsoever. And, and it just, it, that's the main issue with Batman. That's and, always been his MO. And the other thing I, I was thinking about also that would have made Batman more interesting in that film mm-hmm. is that Batman knew all about the Disney project. What do you mean? If he knew that Lex Luthor was trying to build something. In like, general? Yeah, if Batman knew... Uh, the movie would have been more interesting if Batman knew that Lex Luthor was trying to build something to kill Superman. Mm-hmm. And Batman knowing in his mind, we need Superman. Yeah. That would have been more important because then it would have been like Batman tried to do whatever he could to prevent Superman from getting killed. In the Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Got you. It would have been more important because then it could have been like Batman the whole time feeling like he again let somebody else down. Yeah. I would have liked that instead of... That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Because then it would have been like, okay, because of his alcoholism, which he had in the film, Mm -hmm. he wasn't really near the level that he should have been with Luther. Right. Now that he, you know, this movie would have been like, okay, now... He's kind of cleaning up, him going clean again and stuff like that. Okay. Now he's back to, you know, he's reading his book, he's studying again, he's sharp again. Mm Mm-hmm. That would have made that film, you know... Way more intense. Yeah. Got you. Love it. I love that. Uh... Okay, I guess that concludes our show at the moment right now. I think for you fans, definitely look into March 18th for just Justice League, the Snyder Cut. I would say Justice League one and a half, you can kind of say. You know, like how, uh, what's it called, Lion King did their one and a half thing of uh, Timon and Pumbaa's. Or we could say uh, this is the Justice League that we wanted, and the other one is just like a... How do you say a clone? <laughs> yeah, of fake the, the, the multiverse. The multiverse. Yeah, multiverse. So that feels like Earth, Earth Wait, Two, yeah, Earth Fifty Seven, like or Earth. This like, is Earth One. This yeah, would this be, is this is a dynamic one. This is a real one. <laughs> we gave the real one. one. Yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, we're high for it for sure. Uh, for me and Director RJ over here on the table, um, and I truly appreciate you guys watching out. Remember, look us up on Instagram. Uh, the Reject Rundown, look us up on the website, rejectrundown.com. We are picking up steam. You guys totally appreciate the follow-ups. This is from the RWA Productions, of course, of one other TV show. Not TV show. <laughs> segment. Yeah, segment show. And I think we got, Reject pl- Rundown. we got plenty more. So you guys stay tuned and uh, take it easy. Anything for the fans? Yeah, thank you for following us, everybody. Um, hope you guys like the like the actual me laid back me the one who's not trying to be funny on my show even though i'm not that funny but yeah <laughs> thank y'all for listening to us uh hopefully y'all like what we spit out for you guys today and mm-hmm. we will be back with more ideals more wish lists and stuff like that yes indeedy so this is just us rejects there you go y'all take it easy